22 News Broadcast Center, a your local election headquarters special program, an Agawam mayoral debate. And now, here's Rich Tedemer. Good afternoon, thanks for joining us for 22 News Special Decision 2017 coverage. We're working for you this week with a series of debates among the candidates running for mayors of local cities. And today it's the candidates for mayor of Aguam. Joining us here in the studio, former school superintendent Bill Sapelli on the left of your screen and city council president Jimmy Cicchetti. We begin today's debate with opening statements and by virtue of the coin toss, Jimmy Cicchetti will go first. Thank you, Rich. Thank you for having me here today, and I'm sure Mr. Sapelli, we both look forward to a uh, nice debate and speaking about the issues on this fine afternoon. Um, I'm running for mayor. I've uh, been on the council for eight years, council president for two of the last uh, eight, and i um, just going to talk about the issues today and, and uh, have a nice conversation with Mr. Sapelli. Thank you. Bill Sapelli, your opening statement, please. I'd like to thank WWLP and Rich Tedmer for hosting this debate and uh, my opponent for being here today. Uh, my name is Bill Sapelli. I am a lifelong resident of Agawam. I'm a homeowner in Agawam. I have raised my two children in Agawam who attended the public schools and I've worked my entire uh, career in Agawam Public Schools. I've devoted 40 years to the Agawam Public Schools serving as superintendent. For the past six, as superintendent, I managed 60% of the overall town budget, oversaw 700 employees. I negotiated with five different unions and their contracts, and I ensured the safety of 4,000 students. Uh, my extensive educational background includes a degree from uh, St. Anselm's College in Business and Economics, and my financial expertise and ability to, to unite groups of people for a common goal sets me apart from my opponent and makes me the best candidate for mayor. I look forward to being here today and uh, having my platform uh, expressed. Now today's debate will be held in the Lincoln Douglas style format, which means that the candidates will be asking each other questions. The candidates will have 30 seconds to ask their questions and their opponent then has 60 seconds to answer. The candidate who then asked the question will have 30 seconds for rebuttal. The order of questions was determined by a coin toss and Jimmy Cicchetti, you'll go first. Thank you, Rich. Mr. Sapelli, our first question this morning. According to our DPW, it will take more than 90 years at the current rate to complete our road and sidewalk improvement plan. I have committed to proposing $1.5 million from free cash to jumpstart these vital repairs. What is your plan to improve Aguam's road and sidewalks? That's a good question. We uh, do have an issue. As uh, I was watching the news last night, many communities around Massachusetts have the similar situation with roads and sidewalks. Um, there are many so sidewalks and roads in disrepair. We have a pavement plan that has been in effect, and it's basically a software program that the town uses to identify these roads and other plan to address these needs. And in many cases, these roads, the best way to approach them is to take the roads that are in somewhat decent shape, maintain them first, seal them, before it gets to the point of repaving them completely. This is a major issue. We have to sit down, take a look at our budget. There are uh, situations in the budget I'll get into later on in this debate where there are monies that uh, we need to allocate toward roads and sidewalks. Without a doubt, that's one of the top priorities in the community, and I think that's a priority that we have to address sooner than later. Rebuttal. Our roads and sidewalks have been repeatedly underfunded. The free cash I'm proposing has already collected tax revenue that should have been budgeted for roads and sidewalks improvements instead of hiding it away in carryovers. This is a plan that I have come up with, and it is a concrete plan, and something that I will institute um, within my first 30 days. Bill Sapelli, your first question, please. You have recently uh, released uh, what you are referring to as a stimulus plan for our city using free cash. Tell me what measures you will put into place to sustain this plan in the future. Good question, Mr. Sapelli. As I just spoke about, we will be doing one and a half million for roads and sidewalks, five hundred thousand for police, two hundred thousand to address our blight issues, and a hundred thousand dollars for school buildings, and a hundred thousand dollars for opiates, and fifty thousand dollars for senior transportation. One thing I will definitely do is utilize the free cash, like I said earlier, um, for the first thirty days uh, once I am elected, and to continue that, we will be very uh, frugal and fiscally sound with our budgeting practices and to utilize some of the um, 
carryover money that is definitely there that could be uh, easily, you know, stricken from the budget to, to utilize some of those further things. Thank you. Rebuttal. We have to be very cautious on using the free cash. I uh, would not disagree that there is some monies in there that could be used and allocated toward that. My concern is when you're using free cash uh, for items like uh, fire and police, the issue is that that works for one year. In the following years, you have to implement that and put that money in the budget, which would involve increasing taxes because that's something that needs to be sustained. Once you have a salary, that's a set item. That's not a one-time service, and that's what my concern would be moving forward, sustaining that. Jimmy Cicchetti, your next question, please. Mr. Cipelli, Mass Department of Education accountability reports showed Aguam had two level one schools and the district was moving upward when you took the reins as superintendent. Recently released data not only shows no level one school since 2012, but overall measures, including test scores, shows our schools have slipped over the last six years. Other school ranking websites also illustrate our school trending downwards and losing ground compared to the schools throughout the state. You claim strong leadership, yet our schools are losing ground. Can you please explain these disturbing trends in our school system? Well, one thing that you're talking about there is standardized testing, which are very controversial at this point in time. And they're controversial because the state has this uh, belief that all students, all students can attain a score of proficient or advanced, which means every student will get an A or a B. That's not realistic. That's an unrealistic goal. It's an unrealistic goal because we have a diverse uh, type of students just like we have a diverse society. Not everybody's academic and can attain that goal. Initially, we had students at 70%. What you're referring to is a gap that they want us to close that gap from 70 to 100% over six years and get everybody to get an A or a B. That is not going to happen. That's not society, and that's not fair to children or teachers. Rebuttal. You can argue, argue or explain away the data, but you cannot debate it. The certified mass DOE data, which they received from your administration, what can't be dis di disputed, excuse me, or dismissed is the disturbing downturn in our schools in the trend that we're heading. Our schools are trending down and surrounding communities are trending up. No more rhetoric. We need to have the courage to acknowledge these issues and to help the school system and the teachers obtain their goals. Bill Sapelli, your next question, please. Once again, I just want to reiterate that that's an unrealistic goal that all students will re reach proficient or advanced. On October 2nd, you voted twice at the same meeting on the issue of solar zoning, flip-flopping your vote in a span of 10 minutes. Where do you really stand on the solar issue, and why would you vacillate on such an important issue? Mr. Sapelli, I'm glad you asked that question. Our solar is coming back in front of us again. Um, I brought the solar issue back in front of the council uh, for the second time when we did uh, make some uh, adjustments to it and the adjustments they made I did vote for because I was trying to um, get everybody working together and on the same page and also thought we would have another uh, workshop or open discussion before our second reading and what you speak of of, of the flip-flopping but what had happened was they changed it back to the original solar ordinance and I had voted no for that also in restricting it just to industrial land which as we've spoken about it could set us up for a lawsuit and make it too restrictive. My second one was to uh, actually put it on uh, agricultural with uh, special permit only um, but that is something that the council decided to stricken from the ordinance and again it brought it back to the original one that I voted against and that's why I voted the same as the original one. Rebuttal. My concern would not be with lawsuits because you can re have a lawsuit filed by either party. As a matter of fact, we had lawsuits filed by residents as far as uh, the zoning went because they weren't, didn't feel they were protected. My concern is there was an ordinance that uh, you voted on one side of and then in the same meeting you voted on the other side of and I believe it was an ordinance that you sponsored. So I was a little concerned and I'm concerned that if that's the type of indecisive leadership we're going to be expecting, that could be a problem. Jimmy Cicchetti, your next question, please. Our school budget has increased more than $10 million from 2012 through this past year. The increased spending did nothing to stop the downward trend of our schools. The investment in our schools increased more than 20% during your tenure. Yet the schools continued a disturbing downward trend. You recently compared yourself to a private company CEO, yet no CEO would survive 
if costs increase by 20 percent while the company repeatedly trended downward? How do you justify your record of managing the school budget given these measures? You're once again referring to one set of data, standardized testing, which uh, is not a good measurement of uh, success of schools. There are many ways of uh, gauging success of schools, AP scores, AP involvement, AP enrollment, graduation rates. There's a number of ways. As far as the budget's concerned, if you look at the budget, one thing I've been uh, complimented on by you and others on the city council is my um, uh, excellent budgeting procedures and if you look at the budget it's increased only by contractual obligations not materials and supplies we went up in salaries only so I think we've done an excellent job with the school budget as has the council and it's on record rebuttal whether a CEO a superintendent or a mayor leadership initiates actions and implements a plan that stems the tides and shows progress Spending down to zero is the tax and spend plan, not budget management. Any plans you may have had bringing the schools back up hasn't come together. Yet you decide your work as superintendent was done. We can't have this approach impact our entire city anymore. Bill Sapelli, your next question, please. An effective leader is decisive and can initiate positive change. During your tenure as president of city council, your voting record clearly indicates your inability to bring important items to resolution in a timely manner. How will this change if you are elected mayor? When elected mayor, I would seek out more alternatives and be more open in discussion and more available to work with the city council on these issues. Um, a lot of things that we've voted on, a lot of things that we've spoken about on the council floor were initiatives that were brought forth from the council. Um, our current administration um, really didn't bring back many of the you know, uh, positive things that we spoke about or things that we were trying to do. You know, one of the, one of the sound things that I do pride myself on is our blight ordinance. And our blight ordinance, you know, again, was just recently really put in effect by the administration and things are being done. But that was done well over a year ago. And I know it does take time through receiverships and, and attorneys and those kind of things. But again, we need to all work together and get people together and communicate these issues and get everybody working at the common goal. Rebuttal. I think one of our problems in town is that people do like to pass blame. We can, as counselors, blame uh, City Hall, but uh, you have a role in an obligation as president. You should have some, some say in what goes on uh, with regard to those particular issues. And I think we have to take ownership and lead by example. Okay, candidates, we're a little past the midway point of today's debate. We'll take a short break right now and then more questions and answers from the candidates running for mayor of Agawam. You're watching 22 News.
Welcome back to today's debate among the candidates running for mayor of Aguam. It's Bill Sapelli versus Jimmy Cicchetti. We continue now with Jimmy Cicchetti, who has the next question. Thank you, Rich. Mr. Sapelli, our commercial tax rate is now almost double the residential rate. With small businesses faced with absorbing minimum wage hikes, health care costs, etc., what steps would you take to aid and assist small businesses, owners, in Aguam? I think that tax split is something that's unique to cities like Aguam. Uh, most of the cities have a split tax rate, and I think we have to take a close look at that uh, split tax rate for many reasons. Uh, businesses, we want to attract business into our community, and one of the main reasons businesses will come to a community is because of the breaks they can get with taxes. And I think we have to take a close look at that. We have to work with the treasurer's office, take a look at that rate, and see what we can do to ease their burden because uh, it's getting out of, out of hand where it's double the residential. Rebuttal. There must be a universal approach to developing more creative streams rather than just depending on taxes. Without a long-range plan for revenue management, our ability to increase revenue by taxing everyone to death will fail. Bringing the Aguam business community to the table and having them along with the city council and mayor to develop strategies for relief and future investments is my vision for a more business-friendly uh, community. Bill Sapelli, your next question, please. The school budget is 60% of the overall town budget with numerous cost centers and multiple line items. As superintendent, the school budget was transparent and well articulated, yet the town budget, which you evaluate and approve, is not clear. For the last several years, the same concerns would surface, specifically the carryovers. If elected mayor, how would you navigate the complexities of a town budget? Well, what we need in, in town uh, is a totally new, different budget approach. Our budget approach, we need to do a little bit more with uh, capital items and capital budgeting. Um, we also need to get everyone at the table, I think, a little bit earlier in the process. Um, this is something I attempted to do, to do as our council president. And uh, you know, the one of the main reasons of why I'm running for mayor is to get everyone together earlier in the process to just discuss these issues and work out these carryover items and to not have the large carryover items that we currently have. Um, these are issues that you know the council has been talking about for the last uh, couple of years. You know everybody seems to think you know that we want to play this gotcha game and it's not a gotcha game. It's just the current way that we currently do our budget process is we get it at the you know the 11th hour and at the 12th hour we obviously have to work on it. Rebuttal. You're absolutely right. It has happened for several years running, and uh, it seems to be an oncurring event. Every year we go through the same old, same old. And uh, a, a budget is not something that can be set and you forget it. You set it and forget it. It's something that has to be managed. Managing a budget is something I've been used to, and moving monies where they're appropriate, but continuing the same problems uh, isn't a solution. Action has to be taken. Jimmy, your next question, please. Mr. Sapelli, do you believe that commercial ground-mounted solar should be allowed only on industrially zoned property, or should it be allowed by special permit or overlay district on agriculturally zoned properties? I believe solar is a very important source of energy today, and we have to really uh, expand that as much as possible. And I know there's a limit to the amount of uh, space there is left in industrial. Um, I know that the council was uh, addressing that issue with that ordinance that I was speaking to earlier that didn't pass. And I think one of the ideas that came up was the fact that they should use an overlay district just like they do with cell towers. The biggest problem I think residents have is that some residents feel it's unsightly. Others don't, but some do, similar to a cell tower. What we did with the cell towers is we have an overlay district for zoning for cell towers. That was suggested at the meeting. It didn't pass. They suggested special permit. That didn't pass. Once again, we are left exposed with regard to residents and a solar issue, and I think uh, that's shameful. Rebuttal. On the solar issue, Mr. Stapelli, it is a good uh, generation of clean electricity, as we all know. Um, it's something that we definitely do have to still work on and work with the administration and work with the council on this in our uh, inspection services department also um, because you know at the final say they do the one issuing the permits the um, issue that we've had is you know there's a few people that would like to keep it just an industrial but we need to do an overlay district or by special permit 
as you alluded to um, earlier in your answer. So with that being said, you know, it's something that we're going to have to work on and really put everybody together and uh, get everyone on the same page. Bill Sapelli, your next question, please. Mr. Cicchetti, if elected mayor, you will be the chair of the school committee. How would you transition into this role, and what criteria do you think is significant when measuring success of our school? The issues that we currently have um, in our school systems um, is a, a major issue that I've been dealing with over the last couple months from knocking on doors and speaking to our citizens. The way I would transition into that is to, again, as I've spoken about, is to have, continue to have our coffee uh, with Jimmy, our office hours, as other people have called it, but also to, to get the issues out in the community and to work with the school committee and to have a more generalized open discussion, I think, with the public and with our school committee and our superintendent and to work through these issues and, and to get everybody, again, working on the same page and just to bring out the communication to talk about any of the issues that people do have out in the, uh, out in the community with our school system. Rebuttal. My question was more or less dealt with transitioning, which I didn't hear the answer for, and also measuring success of schools. I know you keep referring to uh, standardized test scores, but there's another measure of, of school uh, success, many of them. A band program, a music program, a robotics program, AP scores, AP enrollment, dropout rates, graduation rates, attendance at college. I think Aguam is in very good shape with all those. Are our test scores uh, going to reach 100% uh, effective? Absolutely not. It's unrealistic. Jimmy, your next question, please. Well, I'm glad we, we spoke about that, Mr. Sabelli. Um, through my time in, in uh, campaigning, it has come to my attention that during your tenure as superintendent, there were several thefts of prescription medications, such as Ritalin and Adderall, from the school nurse's office. It has also come to my attention that the initial thefts were never reported to the police or schools were never locked down and the drugs were never recovered. How do you explain these lapses in protocol on, on, under your regime as superintendent? Well, let me just say first of all that uh, I am not aware of those situations that you're referring to. I don't know what you're talking about with regard to uh, missing uh, drugs, prescriptions that were missing from the cabinets that were not reported to police. Uh, first of all. Secondly, you do know that the nurses are uh, under the auspices of the town and not the school department. Uh, they fall under the health department. So what you're referring to, I have no, no idea about. Rebuttal. The fact is that the nurse's office are school property. Your responsibility for making sure there is formal protocol in place instead of deflecting blame as a leader acknowledges a gap and immediately puts steps in place to close them. The fact is there that Obviously, there is no protocol in place until the latest theft of these pills. Reactive management is not a leadership quality, and this was brought to my attention uh, from a parent that has a copy of the police report that uh, she had actually was willing to show to me. So this, this had happened, and I think it is an issue that if you were the superintendent, you weren't aware of these issues um, in, in our schools. Bill, your next question, please. I believe in that last statement you said that it wasn't reported to police yet there's a police report so I don't know where you're going with that if it wasn't reported to police and there's a police report something's awry there I don't know it doesn't make sense to me but I know the nurses have protocol and they follow, follow protocol and they're good hard-working people uh, and they do a nice job the impending Morgan Sullivan bridge project will affect all facets of Agawam and draw from multi funding sources how do you plan to support residents and business owners in the affected areas? Uh, first, to speak to the beginning part of your, of your uh, discussion before your question, what, what maybe I missed, uh, explained myself out during campaigning, somebody actually told me about this, and she said that they weren't reported until she had went and filed for a police report so that she could get her prescriptions filled because that's what she needed to replace the Ritalin or the Adderall for her child. So to answer your other question about the Morgan Sullivan Bridge, that is a, a state project that is being run by the state. Um, from the council, we did do some land takings, but that's all that we've been part of and privy to. Um, the project is a state project and there's really nothing other than trying to work with the state to make it an easier transition on our community 
is really all that we would be able to do at this time. Rebuttal. Once again, I think we're being reactive with that uh, approach to it rather than proactive. I think we need to sit down with the state reps and state centers, both in West Springfield and Aguam, and the mayor of West Springfield is with the mayor of Aguam, and start discussing uh, issues that we need to see brought forward before we're reacting to situations. We have to be proactive and get our foot in the ground with the state reps and state legislators to make sure we have our needs and wants addressed. Okay, candidates, time now for closing statements. Each candidate will have 60 seconds to make a closing statement, and the order of statements was determined by a coin toss, and Bill Sapelli will deliver the first closing statement. Bill? Rich, once again, thank you very much for uh, sponsoring this along with uh, WWLP and for Mr. Cicchetti to be here today. Um, campaigning is an interesting uh, event. Um, this is something new to me. I'm not a politician. I never ran for office. Uh, people warned me what to expect, but until you're in the middle of it, you really don't know. What's interesting, though, is that uh, during um, these campaigns, a lot of times what you do is bring up some of the wants and needs of a district, but what we miss sometimes is what a great, great community we have in Aguam. All the different people, all the different schools, we have great schools, we have great parks. It's a great place to live, it's a great place to work, it's a great place to have a business and bring up a family. And I just want to say I'm very proud of Aguam. I would love to be the mayor of Aguam, and I would appreciate your vote on November 7th. Thank you. Jimmy Cicchetti, your closing statement, please. Again, um, to sort of reiterate what Mr. Sapelli just said, thank you, Rich, for having us here. Mr. Sapelli, thank you for being here. It was a great discussion this morning, and thank the viewers at home for uh, listening to us and tuning in. Um, my closing statement is that I really and truly um, love the city of Aguam. I uh, want to work with everybody in Aguam. A um, couple of things, you know, that we've said um, outside of campaigning and stuff um, you know this community is wonderful it's really really an incredible town to live in and to bring up a family and I have a business there I'm a business owner in town um, I picked Aguam because I love Aguam um, I really would appreciate everybody's support and everybody please get out and vote on November 7th which is this coming Tuesday as we saw earlier the weather looks great um, for election day and I really appreciate this opportunity, and I really incredibly would appreciate the opportunity to be the next mayor of Agua. Thank you to Jimmy Cicchetti and to Bill Sapelli for participating in today's debate. And thank you for joining us for today's debate among the mayoral candidates in Aguam. If you missed any of the debate, you can watch it in its entirety on WWLP.com. Tomorrow on 22 News at 1230, we wrap up our series where we're joined by the candidates running for mayor of Northampton. Remember, Election Day is Tuesday, November 7th. Have a great day.